Hello, Michael here with another Renderman 22 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at Paint Effects Grass. Um, so you are going to want to create a polyplane. I'm just going to zoom in on that. And we are going to make it paintable for Paint Effects using Generate and then, paint, and then uh, Make Paintable. And then we are going to go into Windows, uh, General Editors and Content Browser. Now in the Content Browser, it looks something like this. You've got Examples tab here, and you want to go down to, you've got Paint Effects, Find Grasses, and then we're going to select Grass Wind Wide, which is the same one I used in the last tutorial. Um, now you'll get the brush uh, visible here. You want to hold down B and scale that with your left uh, mouse click. Now you can paint on any geometry. You can um, modify this to have hills and whatnot. I'm just going to make it very boring and flat for the sake of this tutorial. Uh, so we'll just left click and drag, something like that. And then I'm just going to hit Q and go back to my selection tool. We'll left click on that. Oh, actually, before we do that, we'll just click away so we've got nothing active and we'll go to Renderman 22.3 tab and we will create a Pixar surface shader without assigning it to anything. Then we'll select the grass um, under the um, stroke shape tab. Um, we'll go down to the Renderman tab and under shading group, we'll just right click and we'll have Pixar Surface 1SG, which is the shading group that we just created. So if you've already created shading groups, it will be the most recent one if you haven't renamed them. If you want to rename your shading group, go into the Hypershade Editor, clear that mess, and you'll have your Pixar Surface shader there. So you could call it whatever you want, Pixar Grass Shading Group. Um, it doesn't really matter and you can also rename your shader. I normally keep the prefixes Pixar because you have other objects in the scene that might have be also called grass, for example. So that's going to be called Pixar grass. Um, we will chuck a light in. And I'm just going to move that into position. Um, now at the moment in the viewport, you'll see that there is some texture uh, with the grass that comes from the um, grass presets. So if you go into shading, you can see that it's got a primary color and it's got a, um, a tube shading color with some randomization options. You can mess with that if you want, but it's not going to change anything in your render because in your render, it's not actually passing through uh, the color information. So you can see that there, it's just black grass, which might be useful, but not in this instance. So we're going to grab that color information. So we'll select our Pixar graph, uh, grass um, node, map that out, and then I'm just going to hit tab and type in Pixar, uh, PXR prim, the prim variable node. Hit three on that on the keyboard to expand it out. We're just going to run the result RGB into the diffuse color. And then for the variable name, we're just going to type in uppercase C, lowercase s. Um, so it's going to grab the color and then the S is the direction of the color and we'll change the variable type to be color and we'll leave that as, as for now. So now when we render, you'll get the, gra uh, the grass color that's associated with the um, paint effects brush. We also want to give our grass a backside um, shading. So we'll go into the diffuse lobe under advanced. We'll make sure it's double sided shading. Um, you can have transmission on, that will mean that it's going to transmit some light through depending on what the transmission gain is and it will transmit a color. So you can actually use the Primvar color if you want to use that. We'll just hit three on this node, on the Pixar grass node. We'll type in diff and it'll give all our diffuse inputs and outputs. So we're going to grab the result RGB from the Primvar which is from the color from our paint effects grass and we'll run it into the diffuse transmit color. So now when we IPR that, you can see that it's a little bit more, if you looked at the previous version, it was a little bit dark because it had a black backside. Now it's got the same color on either side and it's also transmitting that color through. To make that grass look a little bit more realistic, I'll keep that IPR running. I'm gonna add some specularity to it. Just pump that up until you decide that you've got enough. And the roughness, I think, probably about 
five. Grass is a little bit rough. Uh, the specularity is a little bit rough. It's not completely specular um, shiny unless it's wet. If you, if you want wet grass, obviously, then you don't want it to be so rough. Um, but something like that will probably look okay. Just a touch more specularity. Also, if you want it to make it a little bit prettier, uh, just get a sort of nice warm colored light and that would tend to make things look a little bit nicer. You can see that already has made a bit of an improvement. Now our grass is a little bit thin at the moment, so I'll stop that IPR. We're just going to jump into the, uh, the stroke tab for the grass once you've got it selected. Um, you may want to reduce the display quality because we're going to increase the density. So let's increase it by a factor of five and then we'll run that IPR again. So now you can see that the density has increased quite a bit. So we've got a nice luscious patch of grass here. Um, it's a little bit dark. A good way to tell this, but there's a pro tip for you. Um, in the IPR, um, you can actually view any of the channels for the color, RGB, red, green, blue, alpha, and luminance, and there's a hot key for that. It's H on the keyboard. So if you look at it in just your, um, in just your values, you can tell that the values are way too low for that light. So we might want to increase that to something like this. So we've got some nice hot areas, nice whites, and also some nice dark shadows. So now if I hit A, it goes back to my RGB channels, and you can see that the um, grass looks a little bit nicer. Now if you do want to mess with the colors, you can jump into here. Um, so it's just going to use this um, color here. You might want to use a slightly more um, yellow green. I'm from New Zealand. The grass is very green in New Zealand. So more sort of like yellowy, somewhere around there, is sort of the grass I'm used to. Um, you can randomize the hue. So if you want to get something that looks rather crazy, you can randomize that hue. So you start to get lots of different hues in there. Obviously, if you're looking for something more realistic, then just a small amount of variation is all you need. Saturation variation and um, value variation can tend to make the grass look like it's got um, patches of deadness to it. And then also brightness variation as well. Well, also a nice another nice little tip for you. If you go back into the Hypershade editor, you can actually run the um, transmission gain on a ramp. So we're just going to type in PXR, PXR ramp, hitting tab, so I'll bring that up. Three on that to expand it, and then we're going to run the, well actually we're going to need to create a two float tab, so we can run this RGB into a float input. So we'll hit tab, and we'll type in two float, we'll get a PXR two float, run the RGB into the input, hit three on that, and run the result F into the transmit gain. Now on the ramp, we can change one side to be black and one side to be white. And then we want the ramp type to be a T-ramp. That's just the direction that the um, ramp is gonna be running and the other direction would have been left to right rather than up and down on each grass blade. So now, <coughs> under an IPR, you can see that it's transmitting. If I just jump back and forth, so you can see that that's not transmitting as much and that's transmitting a lot through the top. Actually, I might have not had the transmit game all the way up at all on the previous. So if I wasn't doing that, then that's why I wasn't transmitting a lot of game um, of, of the color, but that's fine. So now you know um, if you wanna make sure that transmission is enabled, make sure you go back to here and go to the transmit gain. I've got that plugged into the ramp, like I said before, but if you want a, a uniform transmission, you make sure that's up some amount so yeah, now you get some um, pretty pretty juicy looking grass there. And this is just the starting point. Obviously there's a lot more you can do to it if you want it to look a little bit better. Um, for the density, my last tip would be to make sure that your ground plane has a either a dirt color or if you're really trying to hide the ground, make sure that, I don't know why that's showing that. Um, make sure that the ground is like a, maybe a dark green or something like that. Um, and you can also, you can see part of my stroke there, so we can actually go to the to the grass wind wide, and you can, if you want to scale up the global scale, you can. Um, 
but what I want to do is change the brush profile so it's a little bit wider so because those you can see the stroke there uh, because those stroke lines are sort of close together it's actually going to spread it so each stroke is overlapping slightly so in the IPR now you'll see that there is less of a gap there as opposed to before where there was a big gap through there and that is some very quick visual development of some grass. Chuck an HDR um, image in there uh, for a dome light and you are looking at something fairly realistic looking. It's not going to hold up under cr close scrutiny, uh, but if you want some nice CG looking grass, it will definitely do the trick. And if you just need to pop some grass in a scene that no one's going to really look at, also it will do a very good job. <coughs> That's it for this tutorial though, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do tutorials most weeks for um, software like RenderMan and other rendering software and Maya and whatnot. Uh, if you want to keep up to date with my work, make sure you check out my Instagram or my website or the Facebook links in the description. That's it for now though, thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.